Hello drone racers, this is the Tyrannus QX7S. Kind of a mouthful, I feel like they've added a few too many random letters on this one. I have been a long time Free Sky fan, really since the original X9D came out. And then I got an X9D Plus, and you may have seen I bought a QX7 for my son, and I've been using that, he's been using that. Well now there's the Tyrannus QX7S and I don't think it makes any sense. I've got one here, but I'm gonna have to be convinced. Let's take a look and see what's inside. Full disclosure, Gearbest actually sent me this one for review because I had no intention of buying one. As I mentioned, I didn't think it makes any sense, but several people have convinced me that I needed to take a closer look. So when they offered, I decided I'll give it a shot. I will admit, I really like this case. This is a really nice case, although I'm a little concerned about how well it will stand up in the long run. It's kind of a fabric textured finish and it, it might get torn and marred. I'll be really curious to see what people think of these a couple years from now. And the kit, it does fit really nice though. And it's nice form fitted foam. And look, they've got gimbal protectors in there, which is nice. I've never really bothered with those much in the past. So here's the radio and there's, there's the difference. Let's see, the knobs all look the same. The switches look the same. The switches are different. So these are, they're less clicky. These are louder. They're a little wider. They have a little more metal to them. They feel just a little nicer. Here's the other big thing. I have the stock gimbals in them. And oh, okay, those are smooth. So this, I've, I've never used Hall Effect gimbals. These come with Hall Effect gimbals. So I've got this here and it, it feels fine. I mean, the stick is fine. It's a little rough because I've taken out all the notches, but it's, it's smooth enough and they feel fine. That feels really nice though. I really like that. And they have aftermarket stick tops on them. I really like that too. I fly with my thumbs, so I think that'll be really good. I'm curious to see how that works, but that is smooth, although that is not, that is notchy. So we're gonna have to open this up and make some changes here. But it, even with the notches, how do I explain this? It feels smooth with the notches even. I don't want the notches there, but compared to this, feel it feels like there's a piece of metal pressing against the back of the gimbal, which is literally what there is, but I can just tell, and you can feel every little piece of grit on that. Here, while I've got the notches, I don't feel that. So that is really nice. They've added some texture to this. So this is textured, but it's just hard plastic. This has like a rubberized, it looks like basically they painted on a rubberized texture on top of that, not a big deal. Here's my big question. Ah, oh, it's still a two-way switch. If this, I'll tell you, if this was a three-way switch, this would be the perfect radio. But that is a deal breaker for me. I, I mean, it's stupid. How stupid is that? But I want that to be a three-way switch. And you know what, I've got a three-way switch here. These are gonna be traded before we're done because this, these notches have gotta go and those have gotta get swapped. So I did the same thing on my other radio. It should be pretty easy to do here. Here on the inside though, it should come with a battery, which the old one didn't. So yeah, it does come with a battery, which is nice. Um, it's only 2000 milliamp, but I don't mind these. I've been flying a nickel metal hydride like this in my X9D Plus for years and it's been fine. The difference with that one though is it has a charging port. There's no charging port here. They really needed to add a charging port for this. Here, I'll just show you. I can't even pull this battery out. It's in here, so I've got to get something to grab a hold of it. I don't want to do this every time I have to charge it. I mean, I love this radio, don't get me wrong, but I don't, I don't like having to take out this battery. So then I'm going to have to unplug it. So I need to get this out and unplugged, and that's fine. What I heard, yeah, so it comes with a charging adapter, which is good, I guess. That plugs in there. And then there's a power brick here. This power brick looks a lot like the one that comes with the X9D. So that charges there. And then there's a little switch here, which this is kind of nice, um, for 6S nickel metal hydride or 2S lipos. Well, I'll make sure I switch that to the nickel metal hydride so I don't screw up the voltage, but I'll plug that in get this charging so we can test this tomorrow. My plan is to test this radio for a while with several drones before we actually finish this video. So right now we're doing the first look. I'm gonna fly it, set up several drones with it, and then finish this out. So this works fine until I lose this. I guess it's not much different, but just having to take it out, I'm, I don't really like. Also, while we're finishing off this, there is a neck strap in here, and then there's a mesh here at the top with what looks like a manual. 
and some stickers. Yay, stickers. So I already have to perform surgery on this to get this adjusted, but we're gonna see how easy this is and see what the Hall Effect gimbals look like inside. It's pretty easy. There's just four screws. They're here, 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 and here. And I'm gonna take these out. Okay, screws are off and set to the side. I think this should come off really easy. Yeah, that is nice. There's nothing even attached there. So that makes that nice and easy. Set that over. So now the Hall Effect gimbals, everything is connected here. So there's two plates here. So there's one that just is applying pressure and one that you can see this little notch here, that's providing the notching. So all I have to do here is loosen that one to get rid of the notches. Okay, so I got that screw out all enough. I didn't take it out completely, but I took it out enough now that it's not touching. So now I don't have any notches. I also tighten this one down just a little bit more to apply a little extra pressure since that one wasn't getting any pressure anymore. The other thing I want to do is flip these switches. So what do we got here? We've got, uh, all right, so I'm going to do this not necessarily the prettiest way, but it'll be easy. So I think I can probably get a hold of this and turn it without marring it. This doesn't take much. So I've just twisted that top piece here just a little bit. And yeah, I don't, I don't see anything. It's fine. So I'm going to take this switch out, slide that out, and this switch will slide out all the way. Now what I want to do is keep track of the orientation because it matters. In this case, the uh, it's a two-way switch. The red was on the top. We'll notice the three-way switch here. The red is on the bottom. So I've got that switch that I will want to uh, move here so it goes from up. I want the yellow in the back or on the top in this case. So I'm going to take this other one out also and loosen it the same way. There we go. So now I've got my th three-way switch here that I'm taking out. And this doesn't require any soldering, anything uh, special. I'm just basically swapping these switches. Now, if you keep track of where the switches are and the labels on them, these will be wrong now, but I don't, I don't care. So there, I want this one on with the yellow on the top, I think. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure that's what I want. So okay, so I didn't notice this. There's an extra piece on here. I've got to change also. Okay, there's this piece, which I don't know what it's for, but that now needs to go on this. It's probably for spacing, mostly. There we go. So now that one will go on there. That was, But that was making this one too wide. It wasn't fitting in here properly. And if I force it, I was going to break it. So now I've got a three-way switch there. So now I'm going to put these back on it. There we go. And that way I've switched it. Now I have a three-way switch here, which will give me my angle, horizon, and acro mode. And then this will be my arm switch. And then I don't really use this one, so I don't care that that's only a two-way switch. So lots of switch warnings. Nope, that one's all good now. There we go. Fail safe, not set. So that's so that tells me already I'm good now because I have this pushed back the way I want it, and now everything's in the right spot. So switch uh, B is back, middle, front. That means I got it on the right way. And then switch, uh, let's see, what see, what is this? Yeah, switch F is up and then down. So that's exactly the way I want it. I got them in the right way, yay! While we're here, let's check the menu and see what version is on this. So it is running 2.2, so we're good there. I may have to load something else eventually if I end up keeping this and using the module or whatnot. But for now, that is going to work for me. But it doesn't come with an SD card. Come on! This thing's $200. It should come with an SD card. Okay, so I've got old, cheap SD cards. I will load that. Actually, I'll, I'll get the software going. I'll show you loading the card. Fine. Okay, I have an SD card. It doesn't take much. Just get whatever is the cheapest you can. I have an 8 gigs, like $5 model in my other one. But I'm going to slide it in the bottom here. And I've got this with nothing on it because that's the easiest way to start and tell exactly what you need. Turn that on. Hold down the power. Now I know that to uh, get it going. And it should complain that something's wrong with the card. There we go, fail safe. There we go, expected version 2.2 V10. So now I know that's the version of the code I wanna get onto the card. So now I'll pop this back out. You can also plug this in and plug it into your computer, but I will uh, actually turn it off before I do that and take out the card and put it in my PC. Okay, you wanna go to open-tx.org. This is where all the software goes to and you're gonna to wanna to go to OpenTX 2.2. In this case, I've got the final version. Here on, it'll talk about all the software, but really what I care about at the moment is down at the bottom, 
SD card content. So here it already tells me 2.2 uses V10. That's what I'm looking at. That's why I double checked that to make sure I had the full final version. So this will be the right version of the card. So here I'll download the content. I have a, this should still just be an X7. The X7S doesn't really have anything different. I'll download this. And then, so I'm gonna download this and then just extract it to the card. While I'm doing that, the other thing I need to do is go to open-txu.org because I don't wanna to listen to the default voice. I need Amber. And here on the front page or here, I, I just Googled for OpenTX 2.2 Amber and it brought me to the 2.2 resources, Amber Sound Pack. This is a RAR file, so it gives you instructions for extracting it here. I've already got this downloaded, but this is the file you're gonna to wanna to download and we will use that in just a minute. So here's the content of that SD card. I'm just going to take this and copy it, go to my SD card and paste. It's gonna take a little while. All right, now I have all the contents of that file in my SD card. Now I wanna to go to Amber and I've just extracted, this is where I've stored it and I've extracted this file. All that's in it is a sounds folder. So I'm just gonna take this, copy that, go here, you'll notice there's a the sounds. I'm just going to paste right over that. There will end up being some name overlaps and I'm just gonna tell it to overwrite any of them that come up. So here I wanna, Replace all the files. Now what should happen is I take this and put it back in here and when we boot it up, we should have no errors and it should sound so much better. Welcome to Open TX. Ah, there she is. I'll still get the fail safe warning because I don't actually have a model set up yet, but there we go. Now it's all set up. One more thing that I want to do, I'm gonna go into the menu here, uh, set the date because it's just wrong without it. <laughs> what is today? Also set the time, what time is it? 9.44 a.m. I did confirm how this is set. It is set to TAER, which is the Tyrannus default for the most part. So I've gone out to my model and looked at where the settings are and I've got all the sticks centered, but they are not centered very well. So I'm actually gonna go through and calibrate this also. That again, we'll go back into the menu button hold here. I'm gonna hold page and go back to page nine and then enter to start. I've got everything centered, all the ready to go. Move sticks all around. Get this centered, then that should do it. Exit out and now I will uh, check those same settings again. Now you can see everything's much better all zeroed out, uh, especially the yaw. The yaw I noticed was far off. It's still just a tiny bit off. So I might do it again, but overall it should be much better, much easier to work with in Betaflight. So now I'm just going to set this up for some models, try it. Once I have some results of how it feels, then I'll come back and do a final wrap up and let you take a look from there. All right, it's now about a week later and I've tested three drones with this and I'm gonna tell you, I, I'm not going back. I'm not going back to non Hall Effect gimbals. The switches are nice, I do like them, I like the way they feel, but these just have a really nice feel. I don't know how much it is, the gimbals themselves, which do feel really smooth. And I also really like these sticks that it came with. Are these worth uh, the extra price, not for the stick? No, but having a battery in it to not have to worry about that I like is good. It's only gone down a little bit, so you don't have to charge it very much. I don't still don't care that you have to take it out to charge it. But the other thing I've noticed that I really like is the sticks stay in place really, really well. When I am testing with Betaflight and set up the radio, I haven't had to make any adjustments with this radio. Everything has gone to 1500 and stayed there. It doesn't move until I move a stick and it stays locked in. And I think that's partially due to these gimbals. The gimbals I've been using on my X9D are probably just worn out. They're four years old at this point. They're due for an upgrade, but just having these, it's it's really nice. So this one though, I am not gonna be keeping. If you haven't seen, I have a giveaway where if we get to a certain number of subscribers, I'm gonna be giving this one away and stay tuned because there might be another secret giveaway for one of these very shortly. So if you found this useful, leave a like and a comment down below and let me know if you think this is worth the extra money. Is it worth an extra $100 for the gimbals, the battery, and the case? The case is really nice. It has been really, really nice to carry it around in that case. Are you better off getting the cheaper one and doing it on your own? Because monetarily, it's, it's really close whether it's worth it or not. But to not have to mess with any of it, that, that's going to be worth it for a lot of people. So remember, just like in a car, the S model is better.